All right, good morning. I am so happy that you could join me this morning uh, for Monday Morning Mojo. I know it's early, and uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do it, though, so we could set our week off with intention and uh, not fall into the trap of everybody else who says Mondays suck. I think Mondays can be an opportunity to set your week and for you to be able to, um, you know, really just kind of get excited about what might lie ahead. So um, I'm glad that you're here. I, I really appreciate the people who are on Zoom because I can actually talk to you unlike on Facebook where I really am glad you're there, but I can't uh, talk to you directly. So if you are watching on Facebook, let me know that you're there and just uh, say hi. So this morning I decided I was just gonna talk to you and I don't have anything necessarily planned. I don't have anything necessarily scripted. Um, you know, being a coach, I like to come in prepared. So I have um, done some work ahead of time to give you a couple of, uh, I guess, lessons on different topics. And I trust that someone's gonna get what they need this morning. Uh, and maybe it'll be me, I don't know. But I know that uh, this group has grown and it's really a place where we can come together and kind of get excited about who we are in this world and what we want to accomplish. And I think um, I like calling it Monday Morning Mojo because we have to get it going. We have to like find our mojo and get it going and let that continue to carry us on through the week. And, you know, this morning I was thinking a little bit about what I wanted to say to some of you. And I think that uh, the one thing that came to mind was that, you know, I think it's important that we stop wasting time because I think that a lot of us can, we're very busy. Some of us may be worrying. Some of us may be thinking too far ahead of ourselves. Um, and we forget, <clears throat> excuse me, we forget to think about what it is that we need to do today. <clears throat> Pardon me. And you forget about what it means to be in the present moment. And I think that we need to allow ourselves to show up and be the, the magnificent person we were created to be. And our doubts and the negative talk in our own minds is really what holds us back from having what we want. And how many of you can agree with me? Who has ever had a negative thought about themselves, about their ability, capability? I'm not alone, right? Okay, just checking. And I think when we stop doubting who we are, then we can really accept who we are meant to be. And if you spend all your time focused on what's not working around you or the things that you think you can't do, then we're not moving forward into action because we're paralyzing ourselves by staying stuck in all of the doubt. And I think that, you know, my message for, for whatever reason this morning is about knowing that we're enough. It's about knowing that we are brilliant in our own way we are magnificently made and we have gifts and we have strengths and and yes we may even have some weaknesses although i don't know is it a weakness or is it just the stuff we don't want to do and the stuff that we're just not good at isn't that okay like is it okay to say there's that i can't be good at everything say yes yep <laughs> It's okay, right? So a strength, a weakness. I mean, I think that our opportunity, uh, you know, is to always focus in on our strengths. And, you know, I'm not looking to make this a lecture. I'd love for this to be more of a conversation. Um, so if anyone is willing to, you know, come off mute and talk to me a little bit and be brave enough to share in this uh, group, you know, what are the lies that we tell ourselves? What are the lies that maybe you've told yourself in the past and really worked to, to overcome? You know, I could share a lot with you. I, I, I wasted a lot of time telling myself that I wasn't smart enough or I wasn't good enough for certain things. And it was just, it was a lie. And it wasn't until I really owned who I am and who I'm not and really was able to find my lane and drive in it. And I now find, you know, that I am getting out of bed really excited every day to do what I do. I'm finding success. I'm finding, you know, relationships, I'm finding opportunities, businesses, um, income, you know, and it's all there because I'm open to receiving it. So if I was wasting that time telling myself the lies and staying focused on all the things I couldn't do, I don't think the universe could, could help me. I think God or the universe, whatever you want to call that for me, you know, it's God. 
uh, I don't think that, you know, it, I would have allowed that to come to me because, you know, literally, this is what I picture. Again, these are my beliefs. I picture my guardian angel sitting up in heaven sometimes like this, like, oh my God, would she just get it already? At, like we could ha help her if she would just let us, right? So what, you know, whatever you're thinking, if, if it's the universe, if it's God, what are the things that are coming to you, but that you're blocking because you're spending so much time in this negative mindset? So anybody hear me out there? Or am I just, am I the only one? Any thoughts that you wanna share? Yeah. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? What do you have to say this morning? Well, um, I think I've, this has been a theme for me all summer. Uh, and a lot of it is about dislodging the stories we're told about ourselves as much as the stories we tell ourselves. Yes. Tell um, me a little bit more about that thought. I, well, I've, I've actually spent, uh, I'm, I moved uh, my operations from Queens last week up to Geneseo, New York, to be near my daughter. Oh, wow. Uh, for the summer, so until the end of August, and I have a 24, almost 25-year-old daughter who is brilliant and amazing and awesome, um, but really struggles the same way that I do and so many women do with this negative image, negative body image, negative like you know like self-worth image, and yet she's extremely successful in the things she does. So there's always this like pull, and we've been talking a lot the last few days about where those buttons are installed, who installed them. Yeah. Um, and, and trying to really be honest with myself, sometimes um, I put more blame on myself. Like I said to her, did I install those buttons? Did, when did I install those buttons? You know what I mean? Well, you know, here's the thing. You might have, but again, were you aware of it? I mean, so what you're talking about with buttons is programming, and we're all right. programmed by our environment. We're, I mean, think about this. Uh, uh, little kids, right? If you've ever watched small children, they're fearless. And they're not worried about judgment from anyone else. And they're very clear about what they want and they're happy to pursue what they want, right? So we're not born with all of this stuff. And I think that, you know, our programming, I know our programming comes from our environment. It comes from the things we read. It comes from, you know, who's there to teach us along the but way. It's also being aware, becoming aware of it because we all have it. And that yeah. was like a lot of this conversation because for me, that programming came from uh, a very, very horrendous situation when I was a child and being told from the time I was very little certain things about what my what I was, what my trajectory would be. Um, and and unless you're really conscious of those tapes, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm dating myself tapes, I don't know what you call them today, digital recordings. <laughs> unless, once you start to become aware of them, it's not like they go away, but you start to be able to have a conversation with them and put them aside and learn from them. But that's yeah. a process that you, you have process. to be willing to engage in. If you're not willing to engage in it, um, and if you have the, the courage, and you and I have talked about that. We had this conversation over 10 years ago when we first met. Yeah. You have to have the courage to be able to hear it and, and, and really allow yourself to feel the feelings associated with it and to really almost like immerse in it in, in, a, in a sense to let it go. Yeah. Um, well, and awareness that's what a lot of our conversations have been about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Magdalene. Awareness is the first step, right? And that's your gift. And then that process, um, and listen, that process can take a long time, sometimes if you're doing it alone. Uh, and that's one of the, you know, like, I think for me, one of my big whys, right? One of my motivations, which is another part of, I think, living the life that you were designed to live, uh, is I'm here to support and help other people get where they want to be faster. That's why I became a coach. And so when you go it alone, it can be, it can be a long process. And that's where working with a coach a lot of times can make this, you know, a, a lot easier for you because as a coach, we see the things that sometimes you don't say. Um, thank you for sharing that Magdalene. Anyone else have any thoughts about, um, you know, really like, living your life without the doubt, without the shame, without the blame. And again, I think Magdalene touched on something, um, and I know we have men that are listening, uh, and I'm not leaving you out, but there is definitely, I think, um, some things about being a woman that are programmed in us where we're, we feel like we're there to give and 
uh, you know, where does all the balance come in between family, career, other life goals that we have, our dreams? Um, does anybody else want to share? Don't be shy. You're not alone. Well, I've been talking to my daughter a lot about how are the choices that we make have to reflect our hopes and not our fears. Yeah. Because uh, she's brilliant. She's beautiful. She graduated college six months early and, of course, had no graduation ceremony or anything because of lovely COVID. Right. Um, and she has aspirations of going to med school. So March comes along, MCATs are canceled. April comes along, MCATs are canceled. Now, fast forward, July 31st, she has her test date. And the state, um, our lovely, wonderful state, um, hasn't extended the applications for med school. So applications are due August 1st. She's not taking the test till July 31st. Mm. So, and she's a first responder. She has been for two years. How's she handling all this? Well, in the beginning, not well. That's why it's like really important that we explain to them that, you know what, she's like, my life, I wasted a whole year of my life, she feels, you know, she's like, everything she wants to get accomplished is on hold. And she started to self self doubt her her decisions. And so um, long story short, like lots of conversations, not just with me, other family members, friends, and she's excited again to be taking the CAT test on July 31st, if it, even if it means not going to med school until 2022. Okay. So and, I and just... You know, go ahead. Sorry, Gloria. So I just, you know, I keep telling her that we need to reflect on our hopes and our dreams and not our fears of the unknown. Yeah. And if I had an opportunity to talk to her, I would say this. Maybe you can relay the message. Never think that anything is a waste of your time. I mean, I, I know I open this with stop wasting time, which is, mm -hmm. is, is, you know, the metaphor for get purposeful really is where I, my intention was, it was coming from. I think in her case, you know, what can she learn from it? Right. So I, I have my own personal story as many of you do. Um, and I could easily say I was, I, I am a survivor of domestic violence and I left that relationship almost 22 years ago, which is really kind of crazy to say. Uh, and it does feel like I'm talking about someone else now um, in, in a lot of ways, but I don't think about the 10 years I was in that relationship as a waste of time because it was the springboard for, I don't want to go back and repeat it, but that was the springboard for where I am today. And it was, it was the journey I had to be on. So it's part of my story, but it's not where my story ends. And that's another thing I think that is important, you know, that we realize that our past is not necessarily our future. So even though this is a challenge for her, and it is, what, what is she learning about herself? What is she learning about being, you know, in, in a situation where it's not always in your control, right? Because that is, that is a powerful lesson that hopefully she can look back on and say, wow, I'm really fortunate I learned that at such a young age. And um, so I just think that, you know, there's some hope there in terms of, you know, what, what are the learnings I can take away from any challenge? And, and li the life experience that she's going through right now, you know, and I said to her, I'm like, you went into this not knowing, you knew you wanted to pursue medicine, but you had no clue as far as what field. I'm like, you have an extra year to figure it out. Right. And, you know, she loves what she's doing now. And I said, this gives you an extra year to do that. And, and listen, I'm not in, in the medical field and it's not my desire. However, I would think perhaps that someone who's going into that field and, and making those decisions now during COVID and all the things that we're seeing about healthcare, I'm sure that's going to be an inspiration in one way or another for mm -hmm. her. So yeah. that's an opportunity too. So. Awesome. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, the thing that is really important to take away from all this is that we can't be a victim to our own thinking. We can't, we can't be a victim to our own thinking and get stuck in that loop, 
right? Like Magdalene was talking about the tape, the loop, that loop that plays over and over about, you know, what's not working and, and maybe the things about ourselves we want to change. You know, instead, if we could focus on the opportunities, if we could focus on all the positive things, then we could use them. Right, because the, we have tools and we have resources available to us. Sometimes they're lying right in front of us and we're stepping over them to go pick up the trash. So why not use the tools that we have to really you know, move us ourselves forward to live up to our potential? I think we make it harder than it has to be a lot of times. You know? So I guess my, my intention for this morning was to give someone a wake up call, to give someone a kick in the pants, maybe to give someone else inspiration or maybe validation that you're all you're, you're on the right track, right? So that that certainly could be uh, for some of you listening, saying, you know what, I've done this work and I get it, and I'm I'm on the right track and I feel good about it. Um, it's your life to live, no one else's, right? So Sarah, I see you have a hand raised. How are you this morning? Um. I'm just real. Sending you love, Sarah, and support. It's okay. I got two rejections from jobs that I could have easily And I know all of this stuff that you just said but it's really hard hard yeah it's not always that easy um i hear that not the end of your story not the end of your road it's it's really i think it's really hard to keep applying when you just keep getting rejected Sure. And you know, you're justified. And, and I just want to thank you for being so brave and being so vulnerable this morning with us, because we've all been there for different reasons. We've all experienced rejection and we've all experienced disappointment. And you're, you are justified for feeling the way you do. It's, it, and you should feel it. And then you need to, um, I shouldn't say need to. I would like for you to think about what's next, right? So um, for those of us who are really faithful, we'll pray for you and we support you. And, and that's another thing too, is that you're loved and you are supported. Universally, you are supported. And I know it sounds easy to say, um, and everyone's experiences are different. Um, and yet we, I'm sure if we were to go around this group, we could all share some really hard times where we were just kind of feeling the way you are, frustrated and disappointed at the end of our rope. And yet tomorrow came and we've lived through it and gotten past it and you will too. And I see in the chat some people sending you hugs. Can anyone relate to Sarah, give us Sarah any, any words of encouragement? Because I think we all, don't think I'm the only one that has that ability. We all have the ability to encourage each other. And that's another thing that can really open your world up. Hey, Lori. So one of the things that I was gonna say <clears throat> that I learned to do is um, to forgive myself for like beating myself up or just like giving in. Like some days when I just cry and have a nervous breakdown and I'm just like, okay, you did that. It's all right. You had a bad day. Now today, we're going to try not to cry a little less. We're going to next day, I'll try to cry a little less there. And each day I forgive myself a little bit more. And I think forgiveness is a big part of like self-awareness and appreciating yourself and valuing yourself that you're not going to be good every day. And there's some days you're just not the best person you could be. And that's really hard for me because I always want to strive to be, you know, the best this and the best that. And so for me, that's a personal struggle. But somebody once said to me that you have 100% gotten through everything you ever did, thought you weren't going to get through. And if you stop for a minute and you think about all the horrible times that you've been through, you made it. And so you are successful. You may not be where you want to be and you may not have all the things you want to have, 
but you 100% always made it through. And when you were going through it, it didn't seem like you were going to make it through at all, not even remotely. And it seemed very dark and very hard, but you did it. So you have that ability. It's just, you don't see it right now. And that's okay. You just have to hang in a little bit longer till you see it because everyone around you sees it and they know your value. And for whatever reason, divine intervention said, maybe these two jobs aren't for you because there's this really great thing that I got coming. Wait till you see it, Sarah, it's gonna be awesome. And then you're gonna understand why these other two things didn't pan out. And that's just, it's hard in the moment, but you just have to remind yourself, you always get through it and you'll get through this too. And it's okay to have a cry session and it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to, to feel those emotions. You just gotta keep pushing yourself forward even while you're feeling them. Lori, that was so good. That was awesome. Thanks. I hope that helps, Sarah. I have to call on Gail, and I know she can handle it. I've known Gail for a long time, and she is one of the wisest women I know. Uh, any words for Sarah, Gail? Good morning, everyone. Uh, God bless you, Sarah. Um, I wanted to share mine comes from a place of faith. Uh, the area that I struggled in was with my call to the ministry. Um, God had called me to preach the gospel um, and I was not educated in that area. I hadn't been to seminary and all of that. And I had doubts about my ability to do that. Uh, but I had people um, that poured into my life that knew my spirit and where I came from and encouraged me along the way and I trusted that but more than anything I trusted God and I would like to offer to you to find what it is that you believe in for me like uh, Anna it is God and you will get through this it's no doubt I, I know you know we're mature most of us are mature women this is not your first bump in the road it's not no <laughs> and, she was wise this too shall pass. And I believe like Lori, the jobs that you didn't get, they weren't yours. They weren't yours. They weren't the best ones for you. There is something better just for Sarah. So just hold on to that. That is coming, right? And have your, have your little whatever you need to have. Yep. I say, you know, I take 15 minutes. Get it out, scream, throw, whatever you need to do. Get through it. But a brighter day is coming and know that. God's got you. God yeah. bless you. Amen. So Sarah, here's my professional advice. Stop it and get over it. <laughs> and I say that with a big hug. I say that with um, the, the compassion and the understanding of everything I heard you say. And I am not trying to uh, make light of, of your frustration and your disappointment. Yet, I think what you heard today is you'll, you'll get over this because if you stay stuck in this one spot, you're not going to see the next opportunity, right? So you have to be a little bit of, well, no, you have to be a lot of a warrior. You have to just put your armor on and go to battle today and say, okay, what's out there for me? What's next? What's the opportunity? And really believe and let go that those two opportunities weren't yours and, and you're better off without them and there's something better coming. And, um, you know, also, whatever else you can take away from this, maybe take a second look at your resume. Maybe this was an opportunity to give you a time out and say, is there anything I need to tweak? Now, don't obsess over it because I don't want you to, you know, dismantle it necessarily. But is there something you can tweak in a cover letter? Is there something about the jobs you're looking at that maybe you're a better fit in something a little different? You know, we all have transferable skills, so we can open ourselves up into a couple of different lanes. Um, and I just want to say thank you for sharing and, and again, you know, stay connected to us and, and that Facebook group because that's where you can get all your encouragement. And before we run out of time, I can't thank you all enough for sharing, um, but before we run out of time, I think it was Jill put something in the chat earlier. Yeah, it was Jill um, about that saying about the glass is half full or the glass is half empty, right? And so there's a couple of things I want to say about that, right? So that's about perception. And whether you believe the glass is half full or half empty, right, is, is I guess a reflection of how abundantly you're thinking, right? Because for me, um, I used to say, well, the glass is always half full. 
But you know what I say now? Who cares? It's refillable. I don't care if it's half full or half empty. Who cares? Just pour more water in. It's refillable. The glass is always there. You can always put more in, right? So even as you drink from, I'm, I know I'm going to sound really like Hallmarky or preachy now, but as you drink from the cup of life and you take some of it in, just find more water to put in the cup. So it's still perception, right? It's really, perception is how you look at things. So if you look at it, and when you change the way you look at things, the things you're looking at change, right? So it's really, to me, it's, it's just refill it. Just whether it's half full or half empty, it doesn't matter. Make it full all the time. Come from abundance. Because abundance attracts more abundance in your life, right? And abundance is always available to you. It's your birthright. So you really have to, uh, you know, be open and, and receive that too. So I know we're running out of time. Um, I think that I am glad that we just could talk this morning and we'll probably do this a lot more often. And, and really, you know, I guess the last thing I'm going to say that just popped into my head um, is this is your life to live. No one else's right. And you can honor the people in your life and you can, um, feel supported by the people in your life, but it's not their life, right? So it's not about pleasing anybody else. It's about being true to yourself and, and learning a little bit more about who that is, right? I mean, think about what we do to build relationships and friendships, right? And how we get to know people. Do you really know who you are? And do you know what you're capable of? And, and what can you do today to get a little closer to that understanding? So I trust someone got what they needed today, uh, not just Sarah. And um, I trust that this was just what was put into this space for a purpose and a reason. And I'm just the conduit for that. And um, it, it's always healing for me too. So I appreciate you all so much. Any final thoughts or ahas, what anyone took away from this call this morning or what this group means to you? And if this group means a lot to you, Please share it. I would love for there to be more people on the calls on Monday morning. I would love to have more people as members of the Facebook group. Um, if this content is helping you, it's, it's going to help someone else. So let's uh, do our part to just kind of get the content out there. But any final thoughts before we sign off this morning? Hey, Anna. It's just good to know that there are others out there that feel the same way that you do. You know, sometimes you think that you're alone. So it's good to have a group like that for someone else to um, to say, well, you know what, this is how I feel. Because thank, I would like to thank Sarah because I felt the same way she was feeling. And I'm glad she was bold enough to say it. Yes. <laughs> so I, I feel better about it. But we do need to express ourselves. Yes. I mean, again, we don't have a lot of time, Bridget, but I'll tell you, another thing we could talk about is, and, I, and I'm all over social media. I use it as a vehicle for communication. However, we can sit on social media and think what we're seeing is real all the time and beat ourselves up for comparing our lives to someone else's. And there's no place for that. You have no business comparing yourself to somebody else. Right. Right? So right. it's really your own journey, too. So thank you for sharing. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you. Any other thoughts before we sign off? All right. Well, I really thank you for being here. Um, I would love for you to throw some feedback on the Facebook group and um, continue to encourage each other and continue to support yourself and love yourself and believe that, you know, you can really have whatever it is that your heart desires. You just have to create a plan to get there. So thank you for this. Thank you for uh, being so honest this morning. Have an awesome day and I will see you next Monday. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, take care. Take care, all.